Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to the channel. So, I'm not sure what's going to be happening in this video, to be honest, uh, the weather forecast is all over the shop, so it's quite uncertain. But hopefully, as long as the Astro Gods are with me tonight, I'm going to be pointing my scope at the constellation Cassiopeia and gathering some more data on the Heart Nebula. I've been imaging this on a few occasions now, and I want to finish it off with a bit of hydrogen alpha data. So, your mom welcome to join me and we'll just see how this all pans out. data that I've gathered so far on this deep sky object has been with this scope, the Red Cat 51 from William Optics and the camera has been the ESI 53MC Pro. I'm going to have this mounted on my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro and I have to say I've been amazed with this mount ever since I bought it. It's, it's really good on tracking and guided and, and the point accuracy when I was using the hand controller was really good. I haven't used that hand controller in a while but all in all, absolutely brilliant mount really happy with it well i'm talking about guy not unguiding uh, hopefully if the bank account agrees with it i'll be getting myself a guide scope and guide camera next month so in preparation i bought myself the cat saddle hand by uh, in red of course um I like to match the setup as best as possible the fill i've used for all this data has been the octolong ellen hands and the two inch round version it just screws into the filter tray yeah, and I'll just pop it in there. However, at the beginning, I did mention that I'm wanting to get some hydrogen alpha data. Now, don't get me wrong, this does capture hydrogen alpha and oxygen and a bit of hydrogen bait as well, but there's something to be said about capturing some HA by itself. So the filter of choice for tonight is my Astronomic HA 12 nanometer filter, and it's an EOS clipping filter designed to go under the body of a crop sensor DSLR. Now, you may be wondering, how am I actually going to be using that if I've got a two inch round filter tray? Uh, last year I bought myself this adapter which is the EOS to two inch round astronomic adapter and it enables me to use this filter with this camera. I'll just pop it in there. And I have to say this has been an absolute money saver. When I bought this camera I thought I was actually going to have to buy a bunch of new filters. Turns out we didn't have to. And by the way, I have got a couple of videos on uh, that adapter when I first bought it, a couple of my earlier videos but if you are interested uh, some cards will pop up and if you want to go and check them out. So I'm going to leave it there for now, uh, I've got a few bits to do, uh, I've shifted everything around on the rig so I'm just going to make sure it's all balanced, uh, everything's connected up right etc. I've got a bit of time to kill so uh, no rush, I suppose I'll catch up with you all in, well, midway through my image session I suppose. Well, this is the beginning of my session. I know I said I was going to catch up with his mid-session, but uh, it was really cloudy. Uh, it has cleared up. Woohoo! And I'm just taking the opportunity to get focused now uh, while it is clear. Hopefully it stays like this. 
I was worried, I'm not going to lie. Anyway, I just want to show you, I haven't got my auto focus uh, on my red cat yet. Um, so I'm still manually focusing and I have to hook up uh, via Team Viewer to my desktop. And I'm just going to show you this, it's on my mobile phone, hopefully you can see that. That's just the diffraction spike that the batten off mask is making. And I want to show you this batten off mask because I think it's absolutely brilliant. My good friend Luke from Luke Matico, he uh, made this for us and set it out um, 3D print printer jobby. Absolutely brilliant. It's, in my opinion, better than the ones that are supplied with the scope. Uh, it also fits the Zenistar 61. I, I think these caps are the same size, or roughly the same size, but nevertheless, it works on both scopes. And it gives you some really fine diffraction spikes. It's brilliant. Um, so, yeah. Thank you very much, Luke, for sending me out that. Absolutely top job. Um, if you don't follow Luke, um, I'll believe a link in the description there. Um, Go and have a look at his channel. He's got some great content. Um, you know, and if you do enjoy it, consider subscribing. Anyway, I'm going to finish tweaking this focus, and uh, I will get back to you in a bit. <laughs> I last captured the Heart Nebula back in November of 2020, and also included in this image is the Soul Nebula. I think these are a great target together and they are both often seen together as a pair when you look at other images online. I captured these using my Canon 77D and my Red Cat 51 which give me a nice wide field of view to fit them both into the frame. To find the Heart Nebula which is designated IC1805 you need to go to the constellation Cassiopeia which is shaped like a W and is quite prominent in the night sky. The star Segin is part of this constellation and the nebula is located between this star and the star Mirim, which is in the constellation Perseus. Also close by is double cluster NGC 844 and 869. So if you can see this in your frame, you know you're pretty close. The light from this object is taken around 7,500 years to reach us on Earth. And has travelled from the Perseus arm within our galaxy, where the heart nebula is located. Well, that is the image session done, dusted. Uh, good and bad news. Bad news, I didn't get as much data as what I wanted. Good news is I did get some data. I've got, uh, I think, 13 subs altogether um, at four minutes apiece. So I think it's just, just short of an hour. I think about 50 minutes-ish. I don't think that is going to cut it, to be honest. It's you know, it's not all doom and gloom. I, I have had three nights on this, and um, on the first night, I think I gathered about four hours. So I, I honestly don't know how much data I've got on this object. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see how it how it turns out. So what we can see here is one of the stretched exposures. So it does look a little rough around the edges. But it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too much different to the day I got with the L um, enhanced, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's it's there. If I just skip through uh, through them, you see the the old type. I think that one I think is a bit dodgy. Uh, so it's come through on that one, but. There's another one, so I don't think I'm going to be able to use all of them, to, to be fair. But, hey, that's, uh, that's, that's the way it goes, eh? Well, I'm going to look on the bright side here. I'm going to catch up on my sleep. <laughs> it has been a busy week for me, actually. This will be, I'm sure it's the fifth night um, in a row. I've... Uh, had the rig set up. Uh, last night was a bit of a touch and go one. Um, fog rolled in just as I about I was about to pull the line and it rolled in. So I, I thought it was gonna ruin the show, but it cleared up after a couple of hours. I managed to get a, I think a four hour session in. So yeah, the weather's all over the shop at the moment. Uh, the forecast just cannot keep up. Uh, it changes every hour. Uh, whatever it, it is winter no oh, so it's <laughs> it, it is going to be pretty rough weather here and there so 
I want to finish off by just saying thank you very much to all the subscribers, everyone who's watched the videos, liked the videos, showed your support um, ever since I've started the channel, to be honest, um, throughout 2021. Really enjoyed it. I'm going to continue to uh, create content. It's something I do really like doing <clears throat> and sharing uh, my whole astro journey. And hopefully you'll all stick around through 2022 and hopefully beyond that. Um, continue to follow my journey. I don't take for granted any of it. I really don't. Uh, and I'm truly thankful for all your support. The following evening I managed to get out again and gathered another two and a half hours with my HA narrowband filter. I did add this to the existing data, however, didn't make much of a difference and it's probably due to the amount of captured using my Elenhant. Altogether, I gathered 10 hours. Hope you enjoyed the video and the final image and if you want to see some bloopers at the end, keep watching as I did struggle to get my words right in one of the scenes. To that end, take care everyone and of course, clear skies. With this telescope, the five, no, it's not a 533, it's not a 533. Let's try that again. <coughs> this scope, the five, no, it's not a 533. Why do I keep saying 533? Uh, uh, I must be tired. <laughs> the camera I've been using is my ASI Air. <sighs> Doesn't look like an ASI Air, does it? Oh. All the data that I've gathered, gathered. <laughs> it's not going well, it's like. Not going well. Uh, and it, it holds its, uh, holds its something. <laughs> right. Of quality of something. Quality of service, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> what? <laughs> Hello! 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 Say bye bye! Say bye bye! Bye bye! Bye bye! Bye! <laughs> Clever lad! <laughs> <laughs>